Welcome back, everyone. Much, much love from us. God is principle. How many times we get lost as we're awakening, believing that God is something other than principle and when we're out of principle, God will hopefully do something for us, come to our rescue. God is the supreme principle. And just like any principle, not only is the whole of the principle here and now, principle doesn't evolve, principle doesn't arrive after it's been tapped into or triggered somehow. Principle is, and the whole of it is. And where is that is? Right here, as you, as your consciousness. And what is it? Well, if we take the principle of math, then that principle is full of math. It is an infinity of math, an infinity of numbers, an infinite combination of numbers. And we will forever be tapping into a greater awareness of math's infinity of numbers and the calculations that we can become aware of as math eternally, as long as we have that principle still in our awareness. The principle of gravity is now. We do not wait for gravity, as we heard in the introduction to the weekend. We would never believe that we have to wait for gravity after we put our foot on the ground. The very act of placing our foot on the ground is the experience of gravity, fully fledged, fully tangible, instantaneous. We would never believe that aerodynamics isn't instant, isn't omnipresent, isn't infinite, isn't total, immediate. We would never believe that we have to wait on the runway and somehow make gravity tangible, make it operational, wait for it while it brings itself together for us. No. Principle is, aerodynamics is, and as long as we're tapped into it, then our experience of it is instantaneous. It is 100% reliable. It is omnipresent. We can be anywhere on the planet. And there we can tap into aerodynamics and fly our planes, fly our kites, fly our helicopters, parachute, paraglide. And in this way, the principle that is God is instantaneous. It is now. It is fully now. We cannot have any of God, which means any of truthful good, in one minute's time or even in ten seconds' time, or next week or by the end of the month, or in time before we die as a result of disease or injury. No, no. God is. Existence is. Truth is. Spirit is. And that is, is fully manifested, fully demonstrated already. The finished kingdom of heaven and earth and all the host of them. Well, you are what is considered in Genesis one of the hosts of them, your mind, your body, everything in your body, your atoms, your cells, organs, functions, everything to do with your body is one of the hosts of them. Everything in your world are the hosts of them. Everything from a speck of dust to the Himalayas, from a little dew drop to the largest ocean. 
a blade of grass to all the fields on earth. Everything in your consciousness, in your world, is considered the ho among the hosts of them. So hear it, God finished. All the work is done. In the heavens and in the earth and in all the host of them. So in other words, there is nothing, nothing, not even a single thought, a single whisper, a single touch, a single smell, a single taste, a single sight, that is anything but the finished perfection of God, perfectly visible, tangible, real. If we cannot see our good, it is just the same as not being able to yet realize what four times four is. We haven't got that 16. We haven't awakened to it. But the 16 is there, is it not? Well, the 144 of 12 times 12, if we haven't, I remember struggling with that 12 times 12 table when I was a young one. <laughs> So if we haven't got or awakened to the form yet, in this case the 144 of 12 times 12 or the 16 of 4 times 4, it does not mean that it isn't there. Right here where we are, what it means is entirely the opposite. What it means is that we haven't awakened to it, put in different language. We cannot yet see that which is right here. Now that changes the entirety of our truth study. Do you see that? Now we're not trying to get God to do something for us, which is a huge misnomer in truth teaching. Most of metaphysics is trying to get God to do something for us personally, even personally as a multitude, as a neighborhood, as a world. It's all personal. God cannot be evident in that way. God is the infinitude unchanging, the same yesterday, today and forever, inseparable, indivisible. There it is, you see. So the only way we can evidence or demonstrate God is as itself. And that means as infinity for the experience of infinity as omnipresence for the experience of omnipresence, not local personal presence, not thing presence, not condition presence, not amount presence or activity presence, but omnipresence as spirit, not matter, not humanity, as incorporeality, not corporeality. There's the first thing. The second thing is now. We must realize that God is now. If we have a hope or an expectation within us somewhere, a belief in us somewhere, that our activity in truth this moment will evidence God hopefully very soon, then we're out of principle. And as long as we're out of principle, we cannot evidence God yet. God is right there with you, right here with me, as you, as me, as the entirety of everything you're conscious of, as the entirety of everything I'm conscious of. The whole visibility of good is right there with you. Not only that, infinite good, eternal good, unconditional good. Think about that. You are and have infinite omnipresent, eternal, unconditional good. Not only that, but that good pleasures, finds pleasure in giving itself to you. Just like the sun, we could say, finds pleasure in giving itself to us. But you see, is the sun giving itself to you and not me, not your neighbor, not all the politicians, not your colleagues, not your so-called competitors, not all the businesses in your town, not all the businesses in the world? No, the only way the sun is evidenced is as universal sun. 
We could never. Can you imagine trying to evidence and pray for, meditate for, study for, sit in silence for a single sunbeam for yourself? You think that would work? Of course you don't. But you see, trying to demonstrate God as the health of our body or the healing of our tumour, our disease, our broken leg, or the healing of another individual's tumour or heart or lung or broken leg is just the same as trying to evidence one single sunbeam for ourselves or for that person. It cannot work because the sun doesn't have a single sunbeam like that available for us. The sun is the universal sun and is only demonstrable as that universal sun, is only experienceable as the one universal sun, never as personal sunbeams. Now that makes it pretty clear, doesn't it? So bear in mind now two things. One, we have to be in the principle that is God, that is truth, that is existence, in order to demonstrate it, have it, see it, as all the good it is, as the truth of existence, and that is as infinity. We must seek infinity as infinity. We must seek the experience or to have the experience of the one universal or infinite presence. Now we're in truth and watch how quickly it becomes evident. We must seek the one universal omnipresence. We must seek the one infinite or universal spirit. The same here, there and everywhere. All at once. The same at every place of itself at the same time. We must seek the infinitude of incorporeality in which there is no humanity, no mentality, no physicality, no materiality. We had a wonderful class on that last night with the instantaneous supply group. Wonderful, wonderful class. God is spirit, not human. God is spirit, not mentality. God is spirit, not physicality. God is spirit, not materiality. So in God, there is only God being, not human being. See, what we've called human being is actually God being. Unfortunately, we've labelled ourselves as something different and separate, which is a human being. But there is no human being in God. There's only God being. The one being experienced in infinite variety. Yes, experienced individually. Unique. Individual. Yes, yes. Looking different with different seeming characters, natures, sizes, colors, weights, positions on the planet. But all of this is just sense testimony. And if we withdraw belief from the whole thing and simply observe without belief, without judgment, knowing that all is God, then we have the real and palpable and visible experience of the one God being. Eternal life, eternal happiness, purpose, love, freedom. We have the one God mind, the one God body. And we, to witness it individually, only need seek that one God being or one God mind, the one infinitude or the one universal God being, God mind, God body, the body of spirit, not flesh, the being of spirit, not humanity, and the world of spirit. One universal, infinitude, omnipresent world of spirit to see it completely real and practical and reliable as the people we meet up with, their minds, their bodies and their worlds and everything in their worlds and ours too, of course. We only need seek God as God is. We only need seek truth as truth is. Never seek the sunshine as a single sunbeam for you or another. And never seek God as a single aspect of God. A single visibility of God for you or for another or even for your world. It's all the same. Seek God as God is. Seek the infinitude of God. 
Seeking God for the whole world is much better, but it's not really enough because we're still thinking objectively, finitely, humanly, materially. Seek God as God is. In the same way, we seek the Son as the Son is. We can't ask the Son to do us any favours and ignore the rest of the world. It doesn't matter how important or how needed the Son is for us. It's no use us going to the Son and saying, I need you, very badly I need you, so please shine for me. And then study the Son shining for us individually. Meditate, pray, sit in silence, hoping that the sun will arrive for us as a single or even a few sunbeams. Impossible, impossible and actually ridiculous as we hear it, isn't it? So now, the same with God. Seek God as God is. And the word God doesn't make any difference. It's not important. Seek, use any synonym. Seek infinity as infinity is. And then you'll have infinity pouring through your three-dimensional senses, which doesn't change your awareness. It's just sensed objectively. But your awareness and mind stays the same, the same yesterday, today and forever. And that is infinity as infinity, omnipresence as omnipresence, spirit as spirit, incorporeality as incorporeality. Now you stay up there in that kind of living awareness and watch how quickly good appears. And it'll appear sometimes in what we may call miraculously and other times in what we may call perfectly natural and normal ways except the whole world is released now and pours its good the rivers of good flow towards us wherever we are because we've released the world as it seems to be remember the master that which or whatsoever ye bind on earth in experience, ye bind also in heaven. We've locked heaven out of our experience, locked good, God, out of our experience by hoping that the same as the sun, giving us a few personal sunbeams, hoping that God will give us a little bit of itself so that our body heals or our friend's body or love's body heals or our patient's or student's body heals or that we or another find ourselves with enough money to get through the month sufficiently with some left over, or even abundance, find our business prospering after a hard period, find our relationship blossoming, filled with love, or a new relationship if we haven't got one or that the existing one is now impossible to make harmonious and that's sometimes fine too sometimes with relationship we have to realize that it now has come to its beautiful ending and it's been very special we've both risen beautifully we've both learned from each other very very beautifully but now our paths are a little different and it's actually very important to recognize this and to free the relationship and allow each to go on his or her own path. It's very, very important. I don't know why that came up right now, but it did, so there we have it. And then the second aspect is the now aspect, and we have to work on this very thoroughly because we just have not yet, as far as I see among the students, or a lot of them, have not yet come to this realization and therefore practice of experiencing the whole of God, the completed demonstration, the complete visibility and tangibility and practicality of the good, the needed good or the need fulfilled, now. We meditate, we listen to this, and we're probably hoping, well, not you. You're not, but you may have done in the past, as I did in the past. And that is, 
listen to a class and hope that it will have the answer that will enable me to witness my healing taking place and maybe by Friday or next weekend or the end of the month or a couple of months time I'll have my healing I'll be completely free you never work you'll be sitting around for eternity like that because God cannot be evident tomorrow or even in one minute's time just as the Sun cannot be evident in one minute's time the Sun may still be evident in one minute's time called now yeah but you see whatever the clock says it is now we've got to forget the clock and live in now the only time is now. see God does not have time in it God is the infinitude omnipresent at every point of itself at the same time so what does that tell you it tells you that the whole of God is present real now at every point of consciousness at the same time there's never any point of your consciousness your awareness that is absent of God that can become God or good whole and complete healed prospered no God is that means that life is the healthy body is this instant now close your eyes actually for a moment I felt a huge wave going through the group I'm sure you did too rest in it Now, <clears throat> realize your life, your healing, we can still use that word if we wish, but as long as we realize that that healing is instantaneous, it is now and cannot be experienced in one minute's time even. Feel the life of God now. And what is that life? What does it feel like? Well, you're not looking for, although it may include, a physical experience or sensation because the physical is false sense. It's fine, perfectly fine, if we have risen above the belief that the physical body has any kind of reality to it. If we're up there in God and realize that what feels like a physical body is actually the one body of God being experienced individually, just as we can say the sun feels like a local heat on our body or in our area, but we know it isn't. We never separate and believe that this heat that we are experiencing or this light that we are experiencing is ours or is real in and of its own self no it is the universal sun that we are experiencing individually and the same with the body the body is the universal better the infinite one body that we are experiencing individually not personally but individually and that body is spirit is God is infinity your body is not contained when we look in the mirror it seems as if it's contained it seems as if it's an entity with edges with internal organs and functions it seems to be of a certain definable height weight color But all of that that we see and are able to define through sense testimony 
is false sense of the body. It is a belief about the body. Your body, this instant, is the one body that is life itself, the infinitude that is life itself, without being contained, without being reliant on anything of the body in and of its own self. Life is not in the heart, in the brain, in the lungs. Not at all. Life is the infinitude. Lift up there now and you'll feel that life surging through you as you. Life is the infinitude. And because all is consciousness, the secret is to be consciously aware of infinity rather than finiteness. Or infinity rather than the physical body. Lift up there now. Life is the infinitude. And this very act of me being aware of the infinitude, or life being the infinitude, is the life I am. I need do no more than lift my awareness into that which life is, into that which health, vitality, purpose, eternality is. And then I have it because all is consciousness. The body is consciousness. If we wish to use that synonym for our experience, our formed body and the form of everything else. The body is consciousness. So when we lift up into that which consciousness truly is, instead of living with beliefs about what our body is or what anything else in our life is, then we have the life that infinity is, that God is. We need do no more. We don't have to somehow mentalize about that life in order to bring it into what we call a physical body. We don't have to translate it or channel it or any of these words that we, or beliefs that we may have thought we need to do before. No, all is consciousness. The body is conscious. The whole life and function of the body is consciousness. So the more we reach up and live in an awareness of infinity as being all, never bringing in anything else, but just staying up there, being interested in and satisfied in and satisfied by the experience of infinity happening in and as our consciousness, that is it. There's the demonstration of life. There's the healing. And when is that happening? Now. You're feeling it now as we have lifted. And you're feeling some peace. You're feeling greater peace. You're feeling a greater conscious awareness of infinity. There it is. This moment of now, you have a far, far greater experience of life surging through your whole being, your whole universe, because you are more palpably aware of infinity as being all, infinity as being the body. As we lift up into God awareness, infinity, omnipresence, incorporeality, spirit, eternity, whatever synonym, I, whatever synonym we wish to use, and please realize it does not matter what synonym we use. There's no more power or presence or realization in the word I than in the word God, in the word consciousness or infinity or omnipresence or spirit than in the word God. There's no magic to any word. So use any synonym that you feel represents the truth, the infinitude, the oneness that is life, spirit and truth. Now, as we lift up into a greater realization, a conscious awareness of spirit and truth, God, or any synonym, we that instant have all that God is and has. It's very, very important to understand that our lifting into and our experience of God happening, as we typically feel as peace or harmony or light or a release, a bliss, a warmth, 
within us, as we feel that, it is not producing our good, our health, our abundance, our love, our peace. It is not triggering something. It is not causing change or healing. It is not setting off the good of the world so that it starts flowing our way. No, no. God is one. There isn't another that it can affect or set off or heal or transform or prosper. Only God is. Only God is. So therefore, when we are having the God experience, as we are right now, we're lifted up in the conscious awareness of God and we are by degree feeling the peace, feeling the lift, feeling the light, feeling the spaciousness, the joy, the rest, the relief. then at this instant, we have all that God is. Now remember, all that God is, is inside us and it is outside us. Our whole minds, bodies and worlds are this instant full of God. I love that statement. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord or God. Yes, but in order to experience it, we must be consciously there, consciously in God awareness, feeling the presence happening. And that minute, that now of feeling the presence happening, even if we may describe it as just a tinge of a feeling of peace or warmth or release or harmony or light or whatever it may be any good feeling that you feel welling up within you that's it doesn't matter what definition we put to it the very instant we feel that presence that is the demonstrated good it's the experience of god inside us and outside us in other words all good form is now visible, real, practical, demonstrated in our practical experience because the only truthful practical experience is a consciousness experience. There we go. You hear that? The only truthful experience is a consciousness experience. Not a mental experience, not a physical, not a material experience. So we must stop looking for those or hoping for those. It's that very seeking of something now going to happen or about to happen in our minds, in our bodies, in our worlds that blocks the whole of the demonstration we've just experienced. Because we've separated and divided that which God is. It's just the same, let's use our metaphor of the sun, it's just the same as us being, let's just say this in this way, just the same as us closing our eyes and being taken out into the sun. This is the equivalent of us lifting up into God awareness, being taken out into the sun, feeling the beautiful warmth and light of the sun surrounding us, warming us, bringing us joy, and then opening our eyes and expecting five single sunbeams to be flowing down and around us, for us, for our bodies, for our satisfaction, for our prosperity, our business, our customers, our students, our family, whatever it is. And in that way, blocking out the whole of the sun we've just felt happening when we were wheeled out there into the sun. <laughs> Again, probably a bad metaphor, but you see the point. If we feel God, or let's say when we feel God, we have the whole infinity of God visible, tangible. The whole world is a light, visibly, tangibly, as God, as we're sitting here feeling God and maintaining our God awareness, feeling God happening. But if we open our eyes and immediately drop into mentality, physicality, materiality, we've shut out the very visibility we've just experienced. 
because we're looking physically instead of spiritually. We're feeling physically or materially instead of spiritually. Now, what we have to do is continue spiritually. We have to maintain our God awareness. We have to maintain our now by now God awareness in the realization that all of God, the one infinite, the one universal God is now visible, present, real, practical as we are up there in God consciousness, infinity for and as infinity, omnipresence for and as omnipresence, spirit for and as spirit, incorporeality for and as incorporeality. As we maintain that conscious awareness, and feel the presence happening within, we have now all the visibility of our good, the reality of our good. And our good means our entire consciousness full of good. It's never look, never look for local good, never look for personal good. You know it now, never look even for somebody else's personal or local good or a multitude's personal and local good. That is not how God can be evident. God can only be evident as God, as that which it is. In the same way, aerodynamics can only be evident as that which it is. We can't bend it to suit us. Can you imagine the chaos that would reign in the world? If we each could bend aerodynamics to suit each of our own personal needs? No, no. Aerodynamics is only evident as that which it is. Gravity is only evident as that which it is. Math is only evident as that which it is. We can't have 4 times 4 equals 13 to suit us, or 4 times 4 equals 198 to suit us. 4 times 4 is 16 and that's it, period. We can demonstrate that. We can have as many 4 times 4 equals 16s as we wish to have, infinitely. They're free. They're unconditional. But we can only have them as they are. They're not different and separate for us. They can never work independently for us, independently of the rest of math, for us or for our benefit. And we must never believe that 4 times 4 can work for us individually, separate and apart from the rest of math. No, no. We must never believe that God can work for us, separate and apart from the rest of God, personally, locally, for today, or for this particular need, or to fulfill this particular need. It simply cannot happen. None of this is in God. Therefore, we cannot get it from God. God is one, infinite, omnipresent, universal, whole of itself and can only be evident as so, as that which it is. Then the principle of it is, the workings of it in our experience is, that as we are consciously filled with God, as we abide in God and God abides in us, read it beautifully by the Master in John 15, the fruitage is rich and instant. Our branches are full of fruit, full of good. Every branch, every single place of our awareness, our consciousness, is full of good as we abide in God and God abides in us. As we keep our conscious awareness up there in God, as God, for God, and we feel the presence happening within us. The mechanics of it, if you like, are that that awareness 
automatically and infallibly flows through our senses and reveals itself as truthful, sensed form or being, thing, condition, amount, place, activity. But you see, we've withdrawn our concern and our effort from sense and sensed things. We're no longer there. We're not interested. Our effort is not there. We're interested in, and our effort is in, God consciousness. Our constant goal, if you like, that's a horrible word, our constant impulse is to feel the presence of God happening. In other words, to feel our truth happening, to feel that peace within, realizing that that peace is the fully revealed kingdom of heaven and earth and all the host of them. Now let us rest for the rest of this class. What do we have? About 15 minutes. Let's be silent now. And you need do no more. You need not even remember what we've just heard. It is right there. It is being remembered for you. It is alive in your consciousness for you, even if you believe you haven't remembered it or haven't remembered all of it or haven't remembered it sufficiently. That's not true. It is consciousness. Your consciousness is this message we've just heard. If you've heard it, it's come from your individual consciousness, which is not personal you or yours, but the one God consciousness speaking to you, revealing itself to you. It seems as if a message of truth comes from what is called a teacher. That isn't true because the teacher is nothing in and of him or her own self. Therefore, how could any message come from a teacher? And you equally are nothing in and of your own self. So how could you receive a message from someone called a teacher? No, no. Consciousness is God and all truth message is heard as the God consciousness that you are and have individually. So don't be concerned. Your consciousness is the message we've just heard. And my consciousness is that same consciousness and is the same message we've just heard. So rest. Just rest and realize it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, give you the visible good. Open up your senses so that you can see truthfully. It'll present itself to you. There's no magic you have to do. Just rest and freely receive.
as you are feeling the presence, as you are resting and freely receiving, gently be aware that you, this instant, have your entire healthy body, your entire prosperity, your entire love, relationship, joy and harmony, safety, security, morality, justice, your entire purpose revealed and fulfilled. Rest in the now of the entirety of God being perfectly revealed, perfectly visible, and stay up in spirit. Ignore the physical senses. Stay up in spirit and experience the spiritual fulfillment. Let's keep going. Keep resting, keep freely receiving. Simply be still and know that I, the very I of you, which is your whole universal experience, is God. And as you are resting, resting the senses, resting the personal sense of self and feeling the presence, you this instant have all the visible good that God is, all the tangible, real, practical good 
that God is throughout every category of life. Now realize this spiritually, because that's all there is. His spirit is God. Realize this universally. Don't think personally. Don't think in terms of what you, to sense testimony, need. Think universally. Experience universally. Keep being still. Keep freely receiving. In this state of God awareness, rest, freely feeling or experiencing the presence happening within and as you, many, many of you will have your visible good in objective sense this hour. Feel free to email me with the reports of the healings that are taking place the visibility of God that is now blossoming in your experience. But be careful. You stay up in spiritual awareness, the one universal awareness. Let sense get on with itself. Let your good present itself to you as quickly as it will without you paying attention to it, looking for the it of it, the objective it of it. Don't go there because otherwise you're clogging up your sense of the very good that you're experiencing as we rest here in God awareness and feel the presence happening. Don't look down. Keep looking up. Don't sense down. Keep sensing up. In God, as God, in infinity, as infinity as the one universal sensed experience, the one universal felt or experienced presence of God, being of God, which is this feeling of peace you have right now. There it is. There's the being of God tangibly experienced as your being, but you're experiencing it because your awareness is up in infinity not down in personal or local or finite sense. And because you are up there in infinity, and because we're sitting together, you're freely receiving all that God is and has. The visibility of your healthy body is quick and sharp and powerful. The visibility of your prosperous finances or business or practice or teaching are quick and sharp and powerful. The visibility, the tangibility of loving relationship, happy family, safety, security, happy home, beautiful neighborhood, are quick and sharp and powerful. But do not look down. Let the three-dimensional experience or sensed world, the three-dimensionally sensed 
presence of infinity, of omnipresence, present itself to you. Remember, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is truth's good pleasure to present itself to you, to nudge you, to tap you on the shoulder, to tap your consciousness and say, here I am. Let it do that. Do not be concerned. Take no thought for your life. But let it be the Father's good pleasure to give all good to your senses. As you stay up in God, up in that which all actually is, thereby enabling your senses to be filled with that which truly is. And then having it knock on your door saying, here I am. Open up in your body saying, here I am. Your body was never sick or diseased or injured. Here I am, the truthful body that is your body to enjoy, to be purposeful with, to be vital with, to be eternal with. The true abundance that, that is never dependent on material laws, material activity, avenues, vehicles, human effort. No, no. God is, and God already is, and it is the Father's good pleasure. Did we hear it yesterday, or did we hear it in the Friday class with the instantaneous supply group? That it is money's good pleasure to give itself to you. Can you understand that? Money is no different from health, or healthy organs, functions, cells. Skeleton, teeth, hair, skin, eyes, ears. Money is no different. Money is no different from the sun, from gravity, from aerodynamics. As long as we are up there as that which it is, in other words, as the consciousness that reality is, then that consciousness, that reality, automatically and infallibly pours through the senses and reveals itself as what appears to be our objective good, our good in what we sense as being time and space, or existing in time and space. The good that appears to be the good of the world. What it really is, is truth now free, or let's say, truth now able to be free through the freed senses of us to be visible, perfectly visible, tangible, real, practical as our earth, as our formed things, the things of our worldly experience. All right, there's the way of it. And there's why you leave it all alone and make your one effort, the effort to maintain the consciousness of God and to rest and freely receive and then let it be truth's good pleasure to present itself to you. Well, there's the end of our second class. What a beautiful class. I'll have to listen to it, but I think we've had another beautiful and very clear class. Thank you, thank you, my good friends. It's such a pleasure to be here with you, to gather together in truth, to experience the very good that is truthfully yours, abundantly yours, and to share how you are able to experience it yourself. So until one hour's time, remain as rested as you can. I am in meditation between, the, between now and the next class. So be still, freely receive, and I will see you in just under an hour on the hour. Thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoy this spiritual audio. Like, share and subscribe for more.